are welcome, brothers and sisters, to another time of Bible study upon this platform, the Surefire Life Conference platform. The platform the Almighty God has given to us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. That's what we have been doing, and that's what we will continue uh, to do. So today, we want to continue with the Bible study of the book of Genesis, which we started uh, last Sunday. Brethren, I um, want to go straight into the study. Uh, last time, we looked at the history of creation, the history of creation, and we studied Genesis chapter chapters 1 and 2. So we studied uh, chapters 1 and 2, and we're looking at the history of creation. Uh, that's heaven and earth, or the heavens and the earth and all that are in them. Uh, you would have noticed that the Bible uses the plural heavens. So that heavens there is talking about the heavenly bodies. You know, F, as, as we have discovered, it's a planet and there are other planets, right? So that constitute the, the universe. That's what we're referring to here. Earth, particularly, uh, of importance and interest because we as human beings dwell here on earth. So very quickly, um, let's take a summary of uh, what we looked at in uh, chapters one and two of Genesis. Point number one, we have established the truth that God created the heavens and the earth. Point number two, that God created humankind in his own image and blessed humankind. Point number three, that everything God created was very good in the beginning. Point number four, that God gave humankind a responsibility to tend and keep the earth, not to destroy it the way humankind has destroyed the earth. Today, global warming is a concern for all humankind. Today, wars, oppression, poverty, all manner of evil, killings, destructions are concerns for humankind. God didn't intend it to be so. Um, and a question was raised. How did we get here? <laughs> and I said, wow, you want to see how we got here? The reality is living with us every day. And we will see, look at it. So from the summary of these four points, we came up with one key question that is the basis and foundation of the truth about our life here and our pursuit here. If you can grasp that and get this foundation, foundational truth about yourself, it's not about religion, but about the truth. Then, as Jesus said, I'll quote it again, you, will, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So this is about you, this is about me, this is about us gaining our true freedom to relate with God, our creator, and live our purpose here on earth till the fulfillment of our own time. So what was that question or what is that fundamental question? The question we looked at is what does image of God mean God created us in his image and blessed us as we have said in point number two of the summary and we said what does this mean what and we deliberated on this we discussed and we shared the summary that we came up with which is backed up with scriptures backed up with other uh, views and perspectives is that the image of God does not refer to a physical form 
It does not refer to your height. It does not refer to uh, my height. It does not refer to a physical form. But the image of God that God created us, created man in his image, refers to nature, attributes, and purpose. That is the free will, purpose here, your free will, the free will God has given humankind to do the things he has set man here on earth to do. We also looked at the same expression or um, as, uh, use in the scripture about Jesus Christ, that he is the express image of God. So Jesus Christ, who is the express image of God, demonstrated this truth, what the image of God means. We have seen that Jesus Christ, who is the express image of God, demonstrated this truth. He came in the form of man, in the form of humankind, demonstrated the nature and attributes of God, love, righteousness, and divine power, and fellowship, continuous and constant fellowship with God. He also fulfilled God's purpose by dying for humankind in order to reconcile us to that state of love and fellowship with God. This is what the image of God means. Nature, attribute, and purpose of God. God has given mankind free will to love, to walk in righteousness, to fulfill God's purpose of tending and keeping this world. Glory be to God. So today we want to move on and look at the other units. We said there are 11 units we're going to look at, but we will collapse some. So unit two is the first man and woman, Adam and Eve. The first man and woman, Adam and Eve. And if time permits us, we will go all the way to unit five, which is a summary of Noah to Shem. Noah to Shem. And that takes us uh, all the way to Genesis chapter uh, 11, verses 10 through 26. Glory be to God. So let's go into it. We'll start by reading the scripture in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 has 24 verses. And so we'll take three people to read eight verses each. Three people to read eight verses each. May I have somebody volunteer to read Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. And then the next person starts from 9 and reads the next eight verses. And then the last person reads up to 24. Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 8. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. For, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm -hmm. and, even, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband it her, and he did eat. Seven, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. 
and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Eight, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves for, from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Thank you very much. The next person, please read from nine to 16. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Thank you very much. The last reader, 17 to the end, 17 to 24. Genesis chapter 3, from verse 17 to 24, please. Genesis 3, 17 to 24. Then to Adam he said, Because you have needed the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cost is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it, and of all the days of your life. Both tongues are pistols. It shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For the dust you are, and to the dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take out of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground for which he was taken. Verse 24. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east. Of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the tree, to guard the way to the tree of life. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. A number of things to summarize here that would help us resolve some things that sometimes create confusion. Uh, just staying with the scripture. Again, there could be um, alternative thoughts, but always test the veracity of it. So if we start from the last verse here, we see here that the Bible says God placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword. So cherubim it refers to angel. And so we can then say that angels were created before the world was created. And as I made the distinction before, that the heavens that is mentioned in the Bible here is not the heaven, the dwelling place of God. It's talking about heavens, what we call the heavenly bodies. So you would see it there, no very clear, plural, heavens, and in small, heavens, letter. So angels already 
existed before the creation of the world. We start from here and then from other scriptures, point two, we know that the serpent that is referred to here is Satan. And the serpent here is not a symbolic use. Get this clear and get this right. It's not a symbolic use. It's really referring to Satan. But you say, okay, um, what? Let, let's get that clear. There is a symbolic use of serpent as Satan. But here it was talking about serpent as a beast, one of the created animals. And this is no, not strange at all in the Bible. And I will show us that the devil is able to communicate or enter into man, into beasts, and manifest. And that's the only way the devil actually manifests in the world. Okay. Um, in the other space, it that we can physically see, you understand that we can physically see interacting in the physical in the world would be would have to be through the physical element, man, beasts, uh, objects. Otherwise, the devil doesn't have any right in this physical world to manifest. The Bible says in the book of, of Revelation, let's go there quickly, 12 verse 9. Maybe we'll read from 7. From seven. It says, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Nine, so the great dragon was cast out. That's the symbolic use. Can you see now? So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So the devil has been the father of lies, deceit, and rebellion. He led rebellion in heaven and was cast out to the earth. So angels, if you understand that angels were created before the world, then you can come to a simple point here that God put cherubim in the garden at the time he drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. So angel existed, right? And then the devil led rebellion against God and God casts the devil out and he's referred symbolically to that old serpent which the devil used to speak to uh, if, if. The other supporting scripture is um, first John, first John, quickly. First John chapter three, verse 12. First John chapter three, verse 12. Uh, and this again is uh, talking, let's also keep in mind the question, how did things degenerate? It's simply the rebellion and the disobedience. It's that simple, there's nothing more. And it's happening till today. As people choose to rebel against God, we are seeing it in families, families that were doing well, living in unity, growing up, father and mother in love, little children grew up happily and all that as they grow and begin to rebel in different ways. The family union, the family peace scatters. Even when individually the children may be doing so well, some will make first class. Some will become, they will smash uh, 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 businesses. Yet, when you look at the unit together, it's still worse off. 
than how they started. It's the same thing in the world. I've always told people, I say, you see, the more the world advances, the worse the world gets as an integrated unit. As an individual, yes, you may get better, but how do you fit? Um, my country now, it's uh, a concern about security and all that. Yet, this is a country where uh, the area I come from, I used to arrive uh, and will wait till 12 midnight when my mother was alive before I will go from our state capital and drive to my community to see my mother. I could stay sometimes till very early hours of the morning, cross at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and then I will start driving back to the state capital, almost an hour drive in the night, alone, unconcerned about anything. You dare not attempt that today, anywhere around the country. So we advance as human beings, but rebellion continues. Let's look at it. it. Was First John chapter three. We came to look at First John chapter three, verse twelve. First John chapter three, verse twelve. If we start reading from verse eleven, it says, "For this is the message that you that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another." Talking about again the attribute of God, not as Cain. Did you see that? Not as Cain who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. So as far back as Cain, which you would see from chapter four of Genesis, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. This Cain that was born after God drove Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden became evil. How did he become evil? The devil entered him. Because point number three, which we had said before, God created man with a free will for the purpose that we're talking about is your free will. You choose to do what is good as God has ordained you and I to do it, or you choose to do what is evil, the free will. So, Cain, the Bible makes us understand was influenced by the devil, deceived by the devil, just as the devil deceived the mother, Eve. Having established that, uh, there is the Isaiah portion, Isaiah chapter 14, yes, and there is Ezekiel talking about the rebellion of Lucifer which was one of the archangels of God um, who turned to be Satan and the devil that we're talking about now. So the point to make simply from here is how did man derail that question? We we'll say we'll address it now. It's very simple. The devil who led rebellion against God came into the world and continued in his rebellion. Because God casts the devil out of his presence. And the devil came into the world and led rebellion, continued that rebellion, deceiving man. So that's how wickedness started and wickedness continued. So with that then, we can say that the entrance of the wicked one into the world happened after God created all things and made everything good. I believe that then sets a clear path for us to then move forward and begin to answer some critical questions. 
from what we have studied here. And the key question I want us to look at now is, number one, what does it mean, lest you die, lest you die? The scripture we have read, verse 3, Genesis chapter 3, verse 3, Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. Let's look at it again. And you will see here from this, what I've just explained now, that it, it adds up, right? God created everything good. The devil led rebellion, and God cast the devil out. The devil came into the earth and continued to then deceive man, who is, put it, the highest, the one God takes the, the God created in his own image and deceives. Uh, if, given that man is, God has given man the free will, the free choice to love him just as he loves mankind, to relate with him, fellowship with him just as he himself has been fellowshipping with mankind. As we have heard here that God came in the cool of the day and he heard Verse 8, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Oh, glory be to God. I love to have this cool of the day back. And as we heard, Jesus Christ has reconnected us. Hallelujah. But we'll get there. All right. So what does it mean to die? As it is written in verse 3, it says, and the woman said to the serpent, that's verse 2 now, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Lest you die. That's New King James Version. I looked at the amplified version, amplified version, and the English standard version, and they all say the same thing, lest you die. I also looked at NIV. NIV says, or oh, you will die. You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, or oh, you will die. So the question is, what does this you will die mean? That's what we want to discuss. Because if you then look at this too, the question, why the confusion in the world? It's clear, simple and clear. And then the question of why there is so much gap is also clear. So why there is so much confusion is because the author of confusion, the wicked one, has come into the world, the devil, and that's his duty is to continue to deceive humankind. Why is there so much gap between this very good that God set for mankind and where man is? Because man died by the disobedience. Is there a reconnection of this life back? Yes. And that's where Jesus Christ has reconciled us and restored us. As he has said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So let's look at it. So what does this die mean? I want to hear a contribution now. That's the question. I believe the answer to the rest of um, the reason why things are as they are and the gap has been explained already but we will feel free we'll talk on it we want to discuss this and then we'll take the other summary so what does it mean verse 3 genesis chapter 3 verse 3 please feel free open the line and now time for discussion and contribution genesis chapter 3 verse 3 or you will die lest you die. This is what God said to Adam. And Adam informed 
if and if kept to it but the devil in subtlety deceived if we can also see here that the devil had knowledge of this command that God gave to Adam and Eve. And so that again also puts, if you were to think in terms of timeline, after God created the, heaven and, the heavens and the earth, the devil came in and uh, deceived Eve. Please. Your contribution. Can you open the line and let's hear your thoughts on this? It's time for discussion. What does it mean? Lest you die or you will die, according to Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. Your thoughts, um, Brother Dara, please. Your thoughts quickly. After Brother Dara, Sister Comfort, your thoughts. And then Sister Gloria, uh, Sister Joy, and uh, Dr. Akwabio. We'll go in that order. Uh, one minute each, please. What is your thought on this? What does it mean? Lest you die or you shall die. Brother Dara, open your line and give us your thought. Thank you. What I've always known from that verse is, as it says, you shall die. It's a, some form of termination. Uh, there's been argument whether it was spiritual or physical. Uh, termination i mean but at the time adam consumed that uh, fruit they died the experience of form of uh, death albeit spiritual uh, that's what i understand from that verse. good thank you yes very good good contribution brother uh, dara that's excellent contribution Okay, Sister Comfort, please let's hear from you. I always said this to me, God's direct talk to Adam. Whatever God spoke to Adam then, there was no metaphor and simile. It meant the same thing. Yes, Adam died at that moment because it has caught that perfection, that relationship of obedience to God and his law. So well, since Adam started to disobey God, it, it, Adam was dead because that would be the end. Disobedience brings uh, alienation from God and alienation from God death. So to me, it means, yes, that disconnection from God, that seems to be perfect in God's image and likeness of being obedient to God's law and allowing God to take control of our ways. So Adam lost out of that relationship and whether no matter the number of years and days that Adam was living, the end of Adam will be dead because that connection had been broken. Thank you for your contribution. Excellent point also. Um, Sister Gloria, your turn. Yeah, good morning, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, um, everyone. Thank you. I think it's the same thing I get from it, what this uh, brother and Aunt Comfort have spoken about. The death there is, I mean, the, the, that verse said, when you touch it or eat it. So even mere plucking it, touch it. I mean, she had to touch it to pluck it before even eating it. Says they will die and they didn't die, at least as they were saying. So physically they didn't die, but spiritually they died. And the key word that has gone wrong is disconnection. Immediately they disobeyed that commandment. They were disconnected from God, which is even more severe. It's better to be alive spiritually and dead physically than to be alive physically and dead spiritually. So my thought on that is the same. They died spiritually. I mean, when God came in the cool of the day, 
as usual. They were not looking forward to it. In fact, when they heard his voice, they hid themselves. They were afraid. And that's what sin does. The Bible says fear has torment. Or perfect love casts out all fear. So they died spiritually. Excellent. Ah, I'm enjoying this contributions. This is joy. Please, your contribution. My thoughts are the same as what everyone else has shared. So nothing different. Um, clearly from the scripture, they didn't die physically when they ate the fruit. So it must have been spiritually. Thank you. Thank you. We have a veteran doctor in the house. Please give us all perspective now, both uh, scientific and uh, scripture. Oh, <laughs> Dr. Apavio, please. Uh, I wonder whether I'm so much uh, knowledgeable to, to give all perspective. But I, I, I would think that um, my understanding of if you eat the fruit, you will die, suggests that there, were, there was a special relationship between God and and the and, and our first uh, create, I mean, creators on earth, I mean, the Adam and Eve. Uh, the fact is that there was that special privilege. So if they disobeyed God, there was going to be a consequences for that, so that they would not be given that privilege. Thank you, thank you, thank you, doctor. The line got uh, quite bad. But we, we heard a bit of what you say. You can summarize again if your line is better. Uh, otherwise, we'll take, we'll take it from there. Thank you. Your point was uh, noted. There was a special relationship. That's the point you made uh, prior to the disobedience. And that relationship was severed uh, once the um, uh, the, the, the instruction was violated or uh, disobedience took place. Thank you. Okay, brothers and sisters, we have all said it. And again, this is the foundation. If we come to this truth and resolve it in our lives, then we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. The whole lot of theories and, and things that create confusion in the world will be far from us in Jesus' name. So let's look at the original instruction again. Genesis chapter two. Genesis chapter two, can we look at it and read from verse 15 to uh, 17. That's when God instructed Adam. He said, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to turn and keep it. 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day, in the day that you eat it, you eat of it, you shall surely die. So here, I mentioned the point that so the, the devil must have been aware of this. And possessing the beast serpent, the devil spoke to Eve. And you could see also the cunningness because this suggests that it was at a time when Eve was alone. And the devil started by asking, did God or has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said, that's verse two now, to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst, the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Here, verse 4, then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. 
knowing good and evil. Look at every word there. So we have captured it. And I really like the contribution by Brother Dara. Brother Dara, you see why I pushed you? Because that is the truth. So this death, and as Sister Comfort emphasized, there is no second interpretation. It is death as we have seen it all through. God said you will die. The day you eat of it, you will die. This death, number one, implies, as we have all said, disconnection from God. It means separation. It means losing the image of God that we have talked about before. And finally, it means physically dying. So it is both the disconnection in terms of fellowship that man had with God, the first man, and physical death. How do we know that? Because God came further, because God in all his infinite wisdom knew what will befall man once this happens. So we've seen here that in, uh, as we continue in verse 19, which Sister Comfort was talking about, Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, the Bible says that God said to man, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. For dust you are, and dust you shall return. Glory be to God. And so, and you also, we also see here that God put cherubim to protect the garden. And why did he do that? Look at verse 22. He says, then the Lord said, behold, the man has become like one of us, which is what the devil said, remember, to know good and evil. So God created man to know good and do good, but gave him free will. The devil who came with evil now polluted man to do evil. The same rebellion he, the devil, started in heaven. He brought to the earth. And so by that pollution, by that rebellion, a man took that fruit of the uh, uh, tree in the middle of the garden and ate and acquired the knowledge of good, of good and evil or acquired evil in addition to the good that God put in him, the nature of God, the good. He acquired the nature of evil along. So God said, now, read that second part. He said, and now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever in this state. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. That's the genesis of evil. Now, the spiritual law is very simple, and, and the Bible says, to whom you submit yourself, servant to obey, his servant you become. That is the trick the devil played, and he continues to play that trick till today. The devil cannot operate in this world in any other way than to make man submit to him, to deceive you and I to follow his ways, to leave God and follow him. And when we submit to him, he becomes Lord over us. But when we reject him and accept God, God remains God over our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. So, what is the re remedy to this death? What is the remedy to this death now that we have seen? God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, 
to reconcile us to God. So the separation, the spiritual separation, the image of God is restored to mankind through Jesus Christ. But the death, the physical death that has come into the world remains with man until the resurrection. And the Bible says this very clearly and says that the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. God has left that judgment on humankind of physical death to remain till the resurrection. With that in mind then, we can see if you then go to chapter four and continue and go to chapter five, you will see the perpetration of evil. Like we read, the first perpetration of evil came through Cain, killing his brother Abel. Chapter four, if we read from verse nine, it says, then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Hey, Cain, are you your brother's keeper? Wasn't that what God meant from the beginning? See what we're talking about? Looking at the family unit. How God intended it to be, because that's the basis of how the world, God's purpose in the world, is meant to be fulfilled. Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? Yeah, Cain, you were supposed to be your brother's keeper. I am supposed to be my brother's keeper. You are supposed to be your sister's keeper. That's how God meant it to be. But the devil has come into the world and sowed the seed of rebellion, the seed of selfishness, and all forms of evil. And evil continued to grow in the world. Verse 10. And he said, what have you done? God now asks Cain, what have you done? He says, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Are you surprised what is going on in the world? The blood of the innocent men and women, children that have been killed by the wickedness of the devil continues to cry out. Let's move on. We're talking about so evil continue to be perpetrated in the world till we come to a man called Noah, which if you look at the genealogy, in chapter 5, you come to verse 30. You see, in verse 30, after he begot Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. 32, I'm reading chapter 5, verse 32 now. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem. Remember, told us we get to Shem. Ham and Japheth. Shem, the son of Noah. Now, verse 6, chapter 6, now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and their daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they choose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever. For... He is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. For there were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Five, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry 
that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, verse 7 of uh, chapter 6, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the earth, for I am sorry that I have made them. Verse 8, but Noah, oh, glory be to God. God will always have a remnant for himself. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then you go through the genealogy. He says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. The free will. Despite all that the devil was throwing and perpetrating evil, a man called Noah decided to walk with God. And through Noah, God preserved the earth. He destroyed every other thing and preserved the earth. Some scientists, who are willing to tell us the truth, have said that that event that happened constitutes the um, hydrocarbons that we have in the earth today. Because that massive flood that the plants, animals, everything died, got buried, the decay process that has taken place over the years has formed the hydrocarbon that we are tapping into and using today. But God preserved Noah and his family. And through him, he preserved the world. And the world continues to this day. This is where we will pause and we will continue connecting from Noah now to Abraham and then to our present day. So now back to you, um, discussants. Let's hear your contribution and maybe you have more questions or what resonated with you before we again summarize and conclude and pray. Because I really want us to pray today with this understanding, the same subtleness of the devil goes on in the world today. Do you have something to add to what we have shared? Yes, Sister Comfort, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Pastor. I don't have much to say, but the word you are using now, subtle way, of the devil to turn things around. In fact, I was so amazed to see what the devil did. If you look at that Genesis chapter uh, three, verse two, is it verse one? The devil said, turn what God said. He said, the, snakes, the snake was more clever than any of the wild animal the Lord God had made. The snake said to the woman, this is, the snake said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Mm -hmm. He turns it around. God started by saying in, in that, uh, is it 15 or 16? The Lord God gave the man command. He said, you may eat fruit from any tree. So that is, God said this. But Satan started in a negative way. So when I found this, I said, I, my God, please, however subtle the devil may speak, let us know. He started from the negative, but God said it positively. Eat everything except this. The devil, must you not eat anything? So we should know the subtle, deceit from him so that we may reply like Jesus. Then he went to Jesus, uh, he had said, you must, and when you fall down the angel, he said, get away from me. That wasn't the purpose of that text. 
So we must know the purpose, the reason for this question so that we, we should know the answer. Does it merit our even listening to it? No, answering it. So I think that was what I, I took out from that scripture. Thank you so much for the time. Thank what you. Happens. Thank you. Indeed, just to write on that before the next person, you know, I told us uh, the law of, uh, 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 of subserviency. I told us that this, so the law of subserviency, to whom you yield yourself servant to obey his servant you become. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. We can start reading from verse 14, but it's verse 16 I'm looking for. He said, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. 15, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. 16, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness. So this is the law that the devil operates, subtleness. And then I also told us about the devil possessing, uh, using the created things that have rights in this physical world to manifest himself. And the key one is this speaking. Oh, we call it evil tongue. And that's what we're going to pray today, evil tongue. That's what, that no wonder the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we shall condemn. Isaiah chapter 54, go and read it with me, verse 17. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Beloved, I have seen these tongues. You would see a tongue just wild around, speak and create division, create disunity. It's all tongue, tongue, the devil's tongue. That is what the devil uses. He will just create one suspicion now between husband and wife from their fire. It will just create one doubt in your heart, in your thought about God. From there, your faith is quenched. Evil tongue. I have seen this cause major problem in a group. Group that is working together, doing things. Evil tongue. This is the weapon of the devil. And we must never submit ourselves to it. Thank you, Sister Comfort, for buttressing that point again. We've gone all the way to chapter 6 in summary form through Noah. God preserved the world. Despite that wickedness has taken over the world, God preserved the world. And we will see again, because the wicked one was still around, despite that God did all that, Noah and his children came out. That righteous man, evil again got sown into the world. And God, the God of new beginning. See, that's why I'm teaching all the principle of the God of new beginning. The God of new beginning has not given up while retaining his faithfulness and loyalty as God, the unchangeable God of his principles, continues to work out salvation for his creature. The man, the humankind whom he created in his own image to bring man back to himself. And that will be the next point we'll be looking at, talking about um, uh, Terra Abraham, and then connecting that to Jesus Christ. Oh, and there couldn't be a better time to look at that than the next Sunday, 25th, because we're going to link that with the birth 
of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. So let's summarize and close. If there is no other contribution. So we have seen that God created everything very good. Created the world very good. Created man very good for man to fulfill God's will and purpose, or to, fulfill, yes, fulfill God's will and purpose. God gave man the free will of purpose. But the devil came into the world and deceived humankind by deceiving Eve, and through Eve deceived Adam, and they rebelled against God. This is sin. Sin is rebellion against God. Sin is rebellion against God, disobedience against God. And because of that, man, death came into the world, both spiritual separation, which is separation from the presence of God, as we have seen clearly, and the physical death that came upon mankind because of that disobedience. This wickedness of the devil has continued in the world. Despite God destroying the first world and preserving a family, you see how powerful family is. Again, it is always about the family. That's the point of accountability of God's grand purpose on earth. God preserved a family, the family of Noah, and used him to start the new world that we are seeing today. Because the whole world was destroyed by water, the whole earth, rather, destroyed by water flawed but as noah continued the wicked one who has had access to the earth continued to sow evil seed and wickedness continues again and so what has been god's grand plan then to the god of new beginning to bring mankind to this state that desired state of love and fellowship with him for man to exercise the free will of fulfilling God's purpose, living in love and doing the assignment God gave man to do here on earth, to tend and keep the earth. That's what we're going to be looking at. So for now, we want to pray. I want to use that Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. And I want you to pray this prayer today and pray it for yourself continually now that your eyes has been op your eyes have been opened to see the subtleness of the wicked one. He is in this world and is the one creating all the problems. Sometimes making man to think that he is right making some people to think there is no God, there is no judgment, just do whatever you feel like doing. Create war, create problems. Sometimes we'll even confuse some of us pastors to also teach the wrong things. And Jesus has warned against that. So we are to look into the Bible for the truth and stay with what God has said. And I know for sure that if you continue in God's commandment, as Jesus Christ has said, if I continue, if we continue, if the world continues, in God's commandment, God's word, as Jesus has said, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. The problem of the world today is rebellion against God. Nothing more, nothing less. 
You know, in God, there is no oppression. If oppression ceases today, there will be peace in the world. But just like Cain, the devil continually pushes mankind to oppress one another. If wherever there is oppression, there will be war. Wherever people seek to dominate others and not think about the good of one another, like Cain said to God, am I my brother's keeper? You are your brother's keeper. Brothers and sisters, we are. That's God's intent, that we should look after one another, the good of one another. Fuel the earth and subdue it for the good, common good of one another. We are giving humanitarian support and yet we are perpetrating wickedness, evil policies, and yet we think that handout will help humanity. Handout can only spread poverty. God has given mankind enough to prosper if we just allow the peace of God to reign, if we allow fairness and equity to reign, we will see prosperity. So I want to close with an excerpt of the America's Declaration of Independence and see how much human beings have deliberately departed from even that which man has known. This is the source of the problem. But we who are in Christ have been restored to that life, that fellowship with God. And while death remains, we will fulfill God's purpose in this world and in the resurrection of the death Death will be destroyed forever and we will live eternally with God and his son Jesus Christ forever. Declaration of Independence, just a few lines. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Is this what the government are practicing today? Is this what human beings are practicing today? Isn't this very tenet what some governments are standing against? Let us pray. Let's pray together. Pray with me. And if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, now that you have understood, this world will only continue to get worse because the evil one will continue to perpetrate the wickedness in the heart of those who submit to him. And it will continue to be the evil tongue that speaks guile, that deceives. This is how evil multiplies. So if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, the son of God, whom God has sent to reconcile mankind to himself and restore us, to fellowship with him, to the uh, nature that God gave to man at the beginning in his image that we talked about. Please, this is the time and you pray with me now and say, Heavenly Father, I repent of my sins and I give my life to you. And I ask, forgive me my sins. And I believe in you and in your son, Jesus Christ, who died for me. And I ask, wash me, cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. 
Forgive me all my sins. And now, Lord, reconcile me to yourself. Give me your Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, to teach me, to guide me, to keep me, to fulfill your will and your purpose for my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, join us. Let us pray according to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. No weapon formed against you, formed against me, shall prosper. In Jesus' name, say amen. And every tongue which rises against you, rises against me, rises against us in judgment, you, I, we shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Raise your voice with me to heaven and say, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray now, O oh God, let every evil tongue of the devil, every evil tongue of the devil that is speaking through man, through woman, through anything against me, let that evil tongue burn by your fire. Let your fire burn every evil tongue that is speaking against me, speaking evil, speaking guys, deceit against me. Every evil tongue that is speaking evil against me, born by fire, born by fire. Go ahead and spread that prayer. Evil tongue speaking evil against me. All oh, your lies, the lies of the devil that is causing problem in my life, causing problem in my family, causing problem in my society. Every evil tongue born by fire in the name of Jesus. It is written, every tongue that speaks against me, I shall condemn. Every tongue which rises against me, every tongue which rises against me, I shall condemn. I condemn every evil tongue. We condemn every evil tongue that speaks against us in the day, that speaks against us in the night, that speaks against us in the spiritual realm that speaks against us in the physical realm, that speaks against our families, that speaks against our brothers and sisters, that speaks against God's plan and God's will for our lives and in our society, in our nation. We command you evil tongue, burn by fire. Almighty God, let your fire burn, consume every evil tongue that is speaking against your will in our lives, in our families, in our nations. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, go ahead and pray that prayer for yourself. Appropriate that prayer for yourself and learn to pray this prayer. And I, ask, I pray the Holy Spirit will teach you this prayer more. Now that your eyes are open to see where problems have been coming from. Evil tongue of the devil instigated by the devil instigated by the devil, perish in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I was talking about the devil possessing the serpent and speaking through the serpent. In the Bible, you remember when Jesus cast out the, 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 the legion, the legion said, let me enter into the swine. And they went into the swine. So, the serpent has demo, or the devil has demonstrated he could possess beasts, human, and objects, use objects. Raise your voice to heaven and pray. Every activity of the devil against me, against my family, Lord Jesus, it is written. For this purpose, you came that you might destroy the works of the devil. Let every work of the devil now, therefore, be destroyed in my life in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I submit to you in my life. Take over my life. Take over my family. Take over everything that concerns me and destroy the works of the devil now. You have destroyed the devil and his works in my life, in my family. And so let every work of the devil be destroyed now in my life and in my family. And so let it be unto every one of us that is connected here now, every walk of the devil be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Finally, now let's pray and say, Heavenly Father, oh, let your will be done in my life. Let your abundant life that you have given to me through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to your word in John chapter 10, verse 10, let your abundant life manifest now in me. Renew your spirit in me and quicken me even now by your Holy Spirit. Oh, you have kept for me in this year 2022 and for the rest of my life. Let me fulfill all your will. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So Heavenly Father, we pray and agree that in Christ Jesus, whatever the thief, which is the devil, has stolen, let it be restored unto us now. In the name of Jesus, whatever the devil, the thief, has killed, oh, by the power, the resurrection power in Christ Jesus, let it be resurrected unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, whatever the devil, the thief has destroyed, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our substitute, the one whose name is above all names, and whatever we ask in his name, we receive it. Father, we ask that let whatever has been destroyed be replaced now in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been damaged be repaired now. Whether it be the body that is sick, disease, let it be repaired. Let it be renewed. Let it be healed. Whatever has been damaged be repaired. Be renewed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, let your abundant life and your eternal life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ manifest in us now and lead us throughout our lives here on earth to fulfill your perfect will for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.